cloud was so great a cloud of witnesses he could have said we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses but he said no it's more than that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses as he looks at chapter 11 of hebrews so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every wage and the sin which does so easily beset us the sin which beset us that's normal the sin which easily besets us that's a little bit above normal but the sin which so easily so easily besets us he puts the word so for us to be more careful for us to be more diligent for us to be more sincere for us to be more dedicated unto the lord let's come back now to matthew chapter 5. you will never forget that little word so the lord jesus christ was teaching his people and he said let your light so shine before men not behind men you know there are some people they say you know they will never tell how good i am because i never do my sin before them but i do my sin behind them they don't know how righteous i am you know why i never demonstrate my righteousness before them i demonstrate my righteousness behind them jesus said no if you have it leave it out and let it be before men if you are faithful not behind us before us in our presence if you are gentle not behind us before us in our presence if you appreciate the doctrine the teaching and you're willing to live by it live by each here while we're here together before us not behind us so we can praise god for you so your teacher your pastor can say praise the lord these people they are the light they have accepted the world they're living by the word leave that life out before us here don't say i will go and live the life at home behind men no let your light so shine before men that they may see let us see the faithfulness the obedience the righteousness the holiness the dedication and the consecration let us see that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven we divide the message of three parts number one living for christ before men for god's glory living for christ before men for god's glory and then number two number two is laboring in christ's ministry for god's glory laboring in christ's ministry for god's glory number three likeness of christ's model of glorifying god come back to number one living for christ before men come back to matthew chapter five Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men this word this was before men that's what we're looking at living for Christ before men for God's glory we need to balance it up here before men if the Pharisees they were guilty of emphasizing before men only not before god before men and it made them to demonstrate it it was for show 
It was for the praise of men. Before men. And they concentrated on that. They never thought about God. They only did it before men. And Jesus condemned that. Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your hands before men. That's the balance. That's the balance. Take heed that your concentration is not just to have the praise of men, the appreciation of men before men. Take heed that ye do not show arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye, uh, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And look at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. This was the error of the Pharisees. The only thing they wanted was for people to see. When the people were not there, they won't do anything good. When the people were there, then they get up and they do something to have the praise of men. That's bad. That has no recognition in heaven. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. That was their problem. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. If you concentrate only on making men see what you do, wanting the appreciation of men, and wanting the praise of men, you'll be like a Pharisee. If you do not think about God first, and say, I'm offering this to God. I'm doing this before God. I'm not doing it behind men. I'm doing it before men. But I'm doing it also before God. We're told in Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We're reading from verse 25 and verse 26. These Pharisees. The only concern they had was before men. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. They just made the outward part beautiful. And then the inward heart was so corrupt and so dirty and so rotten and so unclean. Abomination in the sight of God. But you see, before men, they painted everything. Don't go to that bad extreme. Think about God first. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Lord, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God is number one. Your salvation. You are conscious of God every time. And you know that God is everywhere and is watching you. There are some eyes, big eyes watching you. And he knows your thoughts, he knows your mind, he knows your purpose, he knows your intention. Yes, your light will shine before men. But the bottom line, the reason, the goal, the reason for that is that they may glorify God. Your mind is on God, not on yourself. 
and so walk before me and be thou perfect. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verses 74 and 75. Luke chapter 1, verse 74, that he will grant unto us that we have been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. In holiness and righteousness before him. That is the first thing, the priority of a real child of God. Yes, your light will shine before men. But are you shining before the Almighty God? Because if it is limited to just show, and you are just doing it so that men may see, that's a Pharisee. But if you offer it to the Almighty God first, and then you are living in holiness and righteousness, before God all the days of your life, then you can now shine before men. In Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him. Before Him. That we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Our concentration is on God. Our focus is on God. The desire of our heart is to say, Lord, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for the forgiveness you have given me. And to show my gratitude before you, I'm going to live a life that pleases you. And then the corollary, the consequence of that, since you are not living in isolation, and you are living in the community, it will be before men, but first of all, before the Almighty God. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, Acts, chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 1, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God, before God, before the Almighty God, before His all-seeing eyes. I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. You can see the priority. But now, because you have that dedication, because you have that consecration, that you are going to live a righteous life, a holy life before God, it will also show before men. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. God and men. God first. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. Herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward God number one. He is always number one. He has to be in the first place to have a conscious void of offense toward God and toward men. Now that you live a righteous life before God, then it also appear before men. Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, we're reading from verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him. Number one, 
for as much as before him, before God, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Before him, before God, number one, and then before thee, a man, O king, I have not done any evil. Let your light so shine, number one, before God. Let God see the reality, the genuineness, and the depth of that holiness that you profess, that you possess before the Almighty God. And then after that, before men, let your light so shine before men. This is the balance of each all, and then they will glorify, glorify God who is in heaven. We're looking at First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two, verse twelve. In First Peter chapter two, verse twelve, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you. As evil doers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold. By your good works, which they shall see. By your good works, which they shall observe. By your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. That's the reason you have those good works, that your light so shine. Before men, not behind men, that they may see your good works, and then they will glorify your Father. They not glorify you. They will not praise just you. They will not just say we appreciate you. They will glorify your Father. Who